We are invested alongside our clients. We call it eating our own cooking. We are walking down this path together. Whether we are rising with a bull market or falling in a bear market, we are all in this together. Hello, this is Jim Lowell, and I'm the Chief Investment Officer here at Advisor Investments. We're here with another Advisor You Can Talk To podcast. Today, I'm joined by my friend, colleague, partner, Dan Wiener, Chairman of Advisor Investments. You sure are, Jim. <laughs> hey, Dan. Good to be with you, albeit from a safe distance. Of course, not only is telecommuting not new for the two of us, we've been doing so for a few decades with AI and me here in Newton, Mass., you and our Director of Investment Research, Jeff DeMasso, in our Brooklyn, New York space. Advisor Investments has always been on the cutting edge of technology that enables us to communicate not just with each other, but with all of you across a spectrum of media, just like this podcast. Yeah, I would say we've uh, really been on the leading edge, sometimes the bleeding edge when it comes to uh, being technology savvy. In fact, I checked with our uh, our uh, IT guy and we have spent $2 million over the last two years just getting our technology into place so that all of our people could work from home, take care of our clients from home. We are totally up and running and we don't have to be in our offices to do so. We can all do this from our homes. We have super high technology. It's really been... Uh, it's been quite a lesson here, uh, but we've met it uh, face on and, it, and it's working out very well. I love the point, Dan, that technology is a key failsafe of ours in a crisis, seamless in terms of enabling us to carry on as if it was business as usual. Uh, obviously, this crisis makes nothing usual, but from our expect perspective, we clearly were able to move seamlessly to ensure not a minute or moment was lost in our ability to manage investments wisely and well and stay in touch with all of our clients, which brings me to why we're doing this podcast. While we're used to events and markets changing rapidly, the rate of change exponentially increased because of the spreading coronavirus. And because so much is changing so rapidly, we thought a regular podcast to cover some of the most important bases from our investment perspective makes sense. And so we'll be alerting you to each new podcast, or you can always check with our website for regular updates that our team will be putting together as we manage through these difficult times together. And speaking of difficult times, Dan, uh, can you talk a little bit about the characteristics of, of this bear market that we're suddenly in? Well, yes. Uh, something that's quite unique about this current bear market is that it has occurred so rapidly. We went from market records in February to a bear market in an incredibly short period of time. And this is not typical of bear markets, but it also isn't atypical, if, if you know what I mean. Every bear market is a little different. We've been through all kinds of bear markets over the last hundred or so years that I've looked at the data. And interestingly, uh, one of the best investors that I know who's been around for many, many decades, once told me that the worst bear market he was ever in was during the 1970s when he said it felt like a sandpaper market. He just kept getting rubbed down and down and down uh, day after day. And I went back and looked at the data on that bear market and it lasted over 500 days. So imagine having the same kind of sort of rubbing down, sandpapering down of your of your portfolio, but it's happening in little bits and pieces. You never really know when it's going to end. So that's one type of bear market. This is another type of bear market. The one thing that we know about all bear markets is that they end. Bear markets always feel like the end of times when you're in them, as we know. And while most of us feel most panicked at some point in time, we know that hope is also just around that panic's corner. But where hope always is, we just can't tell you where and when. So as we look at the things that we've been looking at, Dan, in particular, I know we've been tirelessly researching, analyzing, modeling, discussing where we go from here virtually nonstop over the past several weeks, together with our deep bench of research analysts led by Jeff DeMasso, Director of Investment Research. Can you... Uh, Put this current crisis, and I'll certainly try and help too, in this market slide 
into historical perspective. I mean, we know that market corrections, crashes, dislocations are not unique to this to this particular moment. Yeah, I put it in perspective. The 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 ten thousand foot perspective is that any kind of uh, situation in the economy or in the global uh, ethos that that causes us to go into a bear market uh, gives investors, as you said, great pause. But it's usually there's some kind of uncertainty, uh, and uncertainty is heightened during bear markets, and so our defenses go up really fast. I mean, our, it's, it's sort of a, uh, a flight response to the uncertainty and a flight response to the quote unquote risks that we see as our portfolios go down in value. However, what I also know about uh, bear markets and having been through along with you uh, two of the biggest bear markets we've ever seen, the, the financial crisis of 2008 and the uh, bursting of the tech bubble in 2000, uh, 2000 to 2002. Um, one of the things we know is that in hindsight, when we look at bear markets in the rearview mirror, they appear to be incredible opportunities. What kind of opportunities? You know, opportunities to upgrade the value uh, uh, and the quality of our portfolios, uh, upgrade the quality of the of say the managers or the funds in our portfolios, but also it's really the opportunities for those managers who we've already selected and put into our portfolios uh, for them to go out and upgrade the stocks that are all being thrown out, babies with bathwater when um, traders panic. I think that's an excellent point. And of course, our team and we've been in touch with several managers, both managers we invest in, managers we respect highly, to take not just their perspective on the current uh, crisis and what they may or may not be doing about it, but as you say, to listen to how they are assessing, analyzing, maybe upgrading best ideas in their own portfolios at discounted prices, maybe some managers building a little bit of cash, some dry powder for when some of the facts on the ground begin to supersede the fears that we all know now by rote. And one of the areas, of course, that we've been overweight significantly in, in firm portfolios, really since the inception of the firm, has been healthcare. And I think healthcare has been holding up relatively well, along the lines as we hoped it would, a great defensive sector, not because of the current crisis being a healthcare crisis, but because of the ongoing necessary demand for more and better healthcare. Would you say that's true, Dan? Yeah, we've well, yes, we've always had an overweight to the healthcare sector, but we've always done it using uh, active managers that that you and I and our research team have come to believe really have uh, almost an extra gene for figuring out what the best healthcare companies are and putting them in our portfolios. And you know, why do we do that? Because healthcare uh, is a huge industry. It's very diversified in and of itself. You've got everything from the big pharma companies to the biotechs to the health service companies. It's global, meaning that great companies are not just in the US. We've got some fantastic companies in Japan, some incredible companies in Europe. And because of what we have termed demographics, the aging of the populace, and let's not forget that while we're aging here, we've got a huge emerging market where the, the uh, population of lower class moving into the middle class is expanding dramatically. And what does the middle class want when they get to the middle class? They want better health care. So we think that health care has lots of tailwinds to drive it going forward. The fact that this happens to be a health crisis that is affecting us right now. Well, there's going to be a there's going to be a little bit more tailwind for some of the biotechs. We've already seen that. So yes, healthcare uh, does prop us up, does provide something of a shock absorber in difficult market moments like this one. And other market absorbers in our portfolios come from our longstanding discipline of diversification, which encompasses not just a diversification across a spectrum of risk-aware managers, but also in terms of asset allocation, stocks, bonds, cash, and 
So I, I want to mention that currently we're positioned defensively based on the facts we know. And of course, we can become more or less defensive in the weeks and months ahead. We'll certainly watch what our managers that we're invested in right alongside of you do as well. The managers that we do invest in uh, may already be putting some cash to work, as we've said, maybe building some dry powder, as we noted. But we think these managers are the best informed, best able to execute uh, on the planet. And while it's not hard for us to make the case, I would say, Dan, for a dramatic sinkhole in our economy in terms of a sharp, steep recession, potentially, at this juncture, I think it's also safe to say, correct me if, <laughs> if you think I'm wrong, but I think we're in agreement that it's not hard to make the case for a V-shaped recovery. No, I don't know. It's not at all. Um, you know, but again, this is the uncertainty that is pervasive on Wall Street right now. We don't know if it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. We do know, I think it's very clear that the recovery, and this again is why you and I have always believed that finding the best of, of breed active managers is the way to go, particularly investing in times like these, because there are going to be winners and losers that come out of this uh, economic turmoil. Whether we go into a deep recession, whether we go into a mild recession, you know, it's a very unfortunate fact of, of economics that there will be some businesses that go out of business. Those that are weaker, have weaker balance sheets or weaker market, uh, market positions may go out of business. But what does that do? It, it opens up the opportunity for the stronger businesses to take over those market positions, maybe grab some market share, maybe expand their markets into other states, cities, countries, what have you. So we don't know exactly how fast uh, the recovery will come, but uh, yeah, very, very clearly could be a V shape, but the companies that will do the best are the ones that, uh, you know, that survive through the, the dark times. I wanted to just pursue one other topic that you sort of mentioned quickly and then passed over, and that is we are invested alongside our clients. You mentioned it. We, we call it eating our own cooking, but we think it's really a critical issue here. We invest all the people at Advisor Investments through our 401k plan. Many of us who are have outside investment accounts from the 401k, we're invested right alongside our clients. We own the same funds. We invest with the same managers. The bulk of my investable assets and those of my family, meaning my wife, my kids, are all in funds run by the same managers that our clients are in. And so there is we are walking down this path together. Whether we are rising with a bull market or falling in a bear market, we are all in this together. And I think that's critical because it's one thing to uh, spout a lot of, of aphorisms and what have you. It's another to be right next door to you, you know, linking arms, although right now we're, we're practicing uh, social distancing, but uh, investment wise, we have linked arms with our clients. And I think that's really something that's worth mentioning. I completely agree, Dan. 100% of my assets are invested right alongside our clients. Let me try and summarize what we've just been speaking about and draw this to a conclusion. Dan and I think our view is that questions concerning both the depth and impact of the likely recession and the market impact of that and the, pros the possibility, high probability maybe still for a V-shaped climb out of it are still based on the quicksand of conjecture. But while alarm bells are increasing, we're not becoming increasingly alarmed here. Instead, we've taken actions and are actively reviewing where we stand in light of what we know and in light of the ever-changing landscape. We're staying disciplined, diversified, rational, even as unreason increases. Our reasons for staying rational, as we've talked about in this podcast, we have a range of options, an excellent array in terms of our arsenal for greater defense or offense. And we're investing in not just the best managers we think our money can buy, but also in the strongest, most liquid, most transparent, most well-led underlying companies. And so in conclusion, all of us at Advisor Investments are here for you. And you can connect with us in a number of ways. And we will keep communicating with you on a regular basis throughout this crisis. This has been Jim Lowell and Dan Weiner from Advisor Investments with our Advisor You Can Talk To podcast. You can review our podcast at advisorinvestments.com slash podcasts. 
And if you have any questions or topics that you'd like us to address throughout this crisis, please email us at info at advisorinvestments.com. Thank you for listening to us today. And while we wish it were under better circumstances, we know better circumstances will ultimately prevail. Between now and then, all of us at Advisor Investments will be right by your side every step of the way and wishing you and your family good health and helping you secure your financial future. Thank you.